it seems everyone is sharing and selling the secrets to success everywhere, including in the mortgage industry these days. And I'm asked all the time by brand new loan originators, Ed, what's the, what's the best thing to do first after I get my license? What, what's the fastest way, Ed, that I can build my business? And th the truth is there's, there's really nothing new here to tell them. The best and the brightest in the business, they, they work in very, very similar ways. And it usually all begins with the quality of their relationships. Uh, of course, this means the relationships you have with your clients, but, but equally important are the relationships you have with your referral partners and your internal partners, meaning LO assistants, processors, underwriters, et cetera. And there's a few simple, very, very common threads that I see over and over again when I have the opportunity to work with and, and, and learn from the best loan originators in the mortgage business. And, and they're certainly simple enough to recognize. They're fairly obvious. But Ed, why doesn't everyone, everyone apply these not so secret secrets? Well, well the simple answer here is that simple doesn't necessarily mean easy, does it? It takes discipline. It takes patience to become a master at your craft. You, you have to be ready to play the long game. And that means that there are no overnight results. And, and you can't quit before you even start. So let's take a look at three key steps in creating relationships that are great with your clients. Number one, create clear expectations. Lay out, lay out a realistic timeline for the transaction and give them an action plan for their role. For example, what, what documents are needed and when do you need them, right? And remind them that the timeline depends on everyone taking action and not just the LO. Arrange for regular touch points, maybe regular calls on Tuesdays and Fridays during the transaction, whether or not there's news. Mention that you'll, you'll call them immediately in between if there's anything notable that comes up and that they should feel comfortable calling you whenever they have questions. They don't have to wait until the scheduled call. But make sure you meet your own expectations. If you say you're going to call, call. Especially when it's bad news. Right? Nobody likes to make that call, but, but challenges can usually be overcome if you're willing to face them. Number two. Speak their language. You know the ads running right now with a mortgage translator following the, the, the home buyers around explaining the real estate agent's comments as she uses industry jargon, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, it's very, very accurate, isn't it? It's too accurate. And maybe that's why it's funny. Maybe that's why it's an effective ad. Take the time. Take the time to listen to your clients and be careful to explain things in, in plain language. Most importantly, remember, your clients won't be ready to listen to you unless they feel that they've been heard. Repeat back to them the understanding that you've got of, of their questions, concerns, and goals. Number three, button up. Everybody likes to buy. Everybody likes to shop. But no one wants to be sold. This is the critical step here in making sure that you've covered all the bases. When you're finalizing the transaction and, and you're getting ready to close, review with your clients the summary of what you've accomplished together as a team, right? Remind them of their initial goals and, and include mention of any of the challenges you faced along the way and give high fives all the way around for everyone's role in overcoming any of those challenges. And then set up the expectations for closing and show up to closing if you can. Make sure to take the time and ask them if they have friends and family who may need your help as well. Listen, don't be afraid of this step. If you've done your job well, if you've done a great job for them, they expect you to ask them. These are, these are three simple keys that anyone can implement immediately. But again, remember, 
you've got to play the long game here. That means creating a repeatable process for every customer to put through. Consistent activity leads to consistent results. But as I mentioned, consistency means patience. Use these three keys as a simple foundation to build and, and prune and harvest where you need to along the way. In time, you'll have more and more clients who rave about you and your service. And they'll become a reliable, steady source of business. They'll become your super fans.